today I thought I would read this book, Wonderful Earth. First of all, there was darkness. Nothing. Zero. Then God said, let there be light. And there was. Then suddenly, there were stars and planets and galaxies and comets and meteors and great clouds of gas all whizzing about and going bang. It was like an enormous firework display. And God said, that's not bad for a start. Out of all the millions and billions and zillions of planets, God picked out one to be special. Why this one? I don't know. It wasn't even big. It was Earth. God made the Earth spin, which made day and night. And he made the moon go around the Earth, which made the months. And he made the Earth go around the sun, which made the years. Then, with his finger, he gently nudged the North Pole to a, a little to one side, which made the summer turn into winter and back again. It was all very complicated, like making a giant clock, but it all worked perfectly. On the earth, God made dry land and water. The land had mountains and canyons and deserts and huge exploding volcanoes. The water was even better. God made rain and rivers and mist and waterfalls and hailstorms and snow and icicles and icebergs and giant oceans with enormous crashing waves. Just out of water. Then came the plants. Little twiddly ones at first, too small to see. The plants grew and grew and grew until great forests spread right around the earth and the whole world turned green. It was beautiful. There were all kinds of plants. Some had leaves like giant hands and some had long spiky ones and some had small feathery ones and some had no leaves at all. Some could grow in just one day and some lived for thousands of years. Some had lovely flowers and some had delicious fruit. Some had seeds as big as your head and some had seeds like dust. And some had seeds that whirled like helicopters and grew into great big trees. But now the fun really started. God made animals. He made some black and white and some brightly coloured. Some with lots of hair and some with lots of teeth. Some high jumpers and some low jumpers. Some who lived in big groups and some who lived by themselves. Some with stripes, some, with ve some very big and some Some with long necks, some with spots, some who were good at fishing. Some with horns made of hair, some that hiss and some that roar. Some fat and grey, some tall and pink, some with rings on their tail. Some with tentacles and some with tusks. And some with stings on their tails. Some fast and some slow. 
some with blue feathers and some with blue bottoms. Some who liked it cold and some who liked it hot. Some birds that can't fly and some fish who can. And if you turn each half of the page, you can make some that God didn't think of, like the Ostrov and the Quackapus. Now God made hummingbirds as small as bees and whales as big as buses, chameleons that can change to any colour, sloths that can grow moss on their backs, parrots that can talk and swifts that can sleep while they are flying, moths that look like leaves and insects that look like sticks, skunks that smell disgusting, except to other skunks. Squirrels that fly, bees that dance, worms that eat mud and goats that eat anything. Dolphins that smile, crocodiles that grin, hyenas that laugh. Butterfly fish and parrot fish and lion fish and bat fish and cat fish and dog fish and hog fish. Hairy caterpillars and bald eagles. Beavers that build dams and moles that dig tunnels. Kangaroos that carry their babies in pouches and pelicans with be beaks like shopping bags. Sharks with teeth like razors. Beetles with antlers. Gorillas as strong as 10 men. Jumping fleas and jumping spiders. Toads that blow themselves up like balloons. Electric eels and beetles that glow in the dark. Bears that sleep all winter long. Termites that make tall houses as tough as concrete. Salmon that can swim up waterfalls. Lizards like dragons. Elephants with noses like hoses and squids that squirt ink. He made animals that sing, squawk, spout, hiss, hoot, holler, honk, chirp, peck, pounce, flap, fly, slide, slither, squirm and creep and crawl and prowl and growl and go up and slide and dive and swoop and jump and hang and wobble and squeak and roar. He made the duck-billed platypus too. And he made a whole lot of animals that you have probably never heard of. I know I haven't. The dugong, the common noddy, the slow loris, the football fish, the banana quit, the lousy watchman, the wrestling half beak, the weedy sea dragon, the pink fairy amadillo, a rubber boa, and a bush squeaker. And last but not least, he made something really wonderful. What do you think it was? It was you! And of course, me and everybody else, he made people. We're his masterpiece, his best effort. Hooray! In some ways, we're a bit like God. We can think and we can talk and make things. We're really very clever. We're so clever We've even walked on the moon. Now you'd think with such a wonderful world to live in, we'd take care, good care of it, wouldn't you? Especially being so clever. But lately, we haven't been doing, making a very good job of it. We've chopped down the forest. We filled the air with dirty smoke. We've made the rain sour. We've poisoned the rivers and the seas and destroyed the places where animals live. 
We've even made the weather go wrong. That's not very clever, is it? Our poor world isn't very well at the moment. It's in a terrible mess. We're spoiling the beautiful place God gave us to live in. We must stop to think. Does he really want us to chop down the trees? Does he really want us to make all that smoke? How can we clean up the rivers and the rain? How can we look after the plants and the animals? Well, it won't be easy, but if we ask him to help us change, maybe, just maybe, if everyone makes a little change and everyone helps, then we can make Earth a beautiful place. Thank you for listening.